All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Sunash Svatoš. I work at uh, National Film Archive uh, in Czech Republic, Národní filmový archiv. Uh, we are a public institution which is tasked with collecting and preserving uh, film heritage in Czech legends. Uh, during my presentation, I would like to uh, address a topic of using uh, software automation tools uh, in building audiovisual pipelines, facilitating data delivery during uh, the, the whole uh, process. And, um, in a memory institutions, there are many steps involved in the course of handling audiovisual data, like ingesting, verifying the data, storing it, preserving it, transcoding, and delivering. So uh, ideally, there, these steps happened in a defined order, according to a predefined workflow, which is managed either by DAMS, Digital Asset Management System, in which the workflow is embodied, or special case digital preservation systems, like Archivematica or Preservica whose workflows are tightly defined. But often in case of small institutions, it is done manually. Um, although it is a good sign of change that more and more archivists tend to know programming and scripting skills in which empowers them to implement their workflows in an intelligent manner, that doesn't mean uh, one has to do all the steps manually. Uh, like that uh, the com complex workflow in terms of scripting needs many scripts, uh, in, in a sequence together which is uh, bad for, for example, for logging. And if we talk about logging, there's a question about auditing the logs. If we have the logs, do we look at them? Do we open the terminal, screw, uh, uh, scroll through the ter terminal, and just uh, try, if we try to find all the things which are there, if they are in the right order and stuff, uh, what do we do if, we, if one uh, closes the terminal, the tasks just disappear. So that th this is one of the questions that uh, we probably need to tackle in terms of uh, uh, trying to uh, to get the workflow to be deterministic, right? Because uh, one couldn't say that uh, manually triggering scripts is very deterministic because there can be or we all know the scenario, scenario where an, an archivist happened to simulate a role of the machine, right? Manually triggering scripts and top copy tasks, uh, or manually inspecting the log output. And uh, this can, uh, oh, sorry. This can lead to variations in quality, non-standard standard processing time, or human errors, like that somebody just forgot to make a checksum, and somebody else finds out several years later what to do with it. Yeah. Um, so it is without doubt that an archivist should rather let the machines to do the heavy lifting and use his or her precious time to do other things like figuring out corner cases or writing a better code. Uh, so what, we, uh, what if we had a system in place which could def uh, define a deterministic pipeline according to the required workflow? Fortunately, we can just reuse some of the tools which were invented in other IT domains to solve these kind of problems. These are called automation or orchestration systems. Um, these applications allow the user to specify the inputs, like an ID of the work in the database or a file name. Define particular steps, like taking the file, checking its fixity, transcoding it, do validations on these outputs, and notify the user about the result, preferably with a nice web-based GUI, which can be used remotely, uh, regardless of, loc of the location. And one doesn't need to write the scripts again. We can just reuse the, the scripts which are there, or either our scripts in the institution, or some scripts lying in a Git repository, like IFI scripts from Kiran. Uh, which can then be used in the in the pipeline uh, according to their inputs, and there are several several solutions which were invented in the IT domain. Uh, sorry, I just made the one slide. Sorry, um, uh, which uh, which tackle these kind of problems and m mostly these uh, these systems are based on agent model, so we have several slaves which connect to the master, and the master sends the 
the task, excluding the Ansible, which is a stateless model, which I'm not going to talk about uh, during my talk. But what I'm going to talk about is uh, Jenkins, uh, and it's why why will I talk about it because we uh, using it we're using it extensively at NFA to a great success for both technical and non te technical people, mainly for its GUI, of course. <laughs> Uh, it's a web application for managing process of building software, originally, so-called continuous integration system. Uh, but it is, a, it is a generic system for automating labor-intensive IT tasks. We can use it also for digital preservation tasks as well. Furthermore, it has uh, an API, which with we can integrate it with uh, pre-existing applications, extending them, their functionality. So, uh, in the next few slides, I'm gonna uh, present you some screenshots of the application. I'm very bad at demos, so sorry about that, but probably I guess uh, you can try the software yourselves in uh, some of your test environments. Uh, so, the Jenkins defines uh, so called jobs, which are essentially recipes for doing something. This can be anything like uh, transcode any given directory into FFV1, do the reverse check by checking it back, compare the checksums, and send me a notification, or make it back it package out of some files or some directories. So uh, here we see uh, a list of some jobs, and these jobs we can trigger according to some parameters. So uh, the job can, we, can have some parameters which you can define in the configuration, and these parameters are then uh, used in the in the in the in, in the job itself in the task, uh, you can uh, define these uh, parameters either in the configuration of the job or dynamically through integration with other, let's say, uh, other systems through an API or so. Because as Jenkins has a API, it can be very uh, very easily done. So. Uh, uh, then when you run the job. You have the log output, and you can inspect it. And mainly, the job is stored in the in the master. And then you can uh, go back to the master and inspect it uh, after uh, after the job is done. So um, so uh, you can uh, the tasks in the job can be anything from executing a shell command or a git repository checkout or a copy command yeah uh, as as the job uh, has it has its runs in history these are called builds you can get back to the build and inspect the output these things are preserved in the in the easy, f easy to find file structure. You don't need the system to, to, to inspect the, the results, so you can easily back it up or so. And you can change the, the jobs between themselves by having uh, uh, conditions, and according to these conditions, it can do something or it can uh, catch some error cases, corner cases, and stuff. Uh, and I was telling you that uh, Jenkins is an agent-based system. So basically, you can have a server farm on which uh, every node in the farm has an agent, and the, the agent is connected to a master. And then you have tags on ex uh, the executive uh, nodes. And according to a, a parameters in the job, they trigger only on the, on the node which, is, which has the tag. Uh, yeah, we, which is seen here in the in, in the middle that we only want to run this job in a Linux environment with a CUDA card. Uh, we can also use Jenkins as a, a cron commander, so we can just do some things uh, every day or so. And then uh, the configuration of the Jenkins can be uh, systematically pushed into Git repository, so we can. Uh, back up this uh, Git repository and have the, the workflow somewhere else than in the system. So conclusion, uh, 
once a workflow has been standardized, it's critical to remove, ah, sorry, it's my, my time is up, sorry. The, it's critical to resu, uh, reduce human intervention uh, by employing a high-level system that tracks various tasks or do data wrangling, and uh, there are systems in place which can help this problem, and local retention is critical in, for the, to determining what will happen during the creation process. Engine is great, of course. Yeah. Thank you.